how would we have ever found out the value of those resistors or what those components were if it wasn't for this manual? How? I mean, if every company provided a manual like this with so much details, a lot more devices would get fixed. Kenwood deserves to be praised for that manual, honestly. We need everyone to do the same. Why can't Kenwood do it? And Apple, for example, cannot. They provided a 156-page manual. They're not afraid that you're going to go and look at their 156-page manual and create a similar product. It doesn't work like this. Here we have a motherboard that came in for repair. I do not know what this board is. I have not worked on such a board before. But we're going to have to read the ticket and see what the customer wrote. The customer wrote device make model Kenwood NXR 800K. Radio repeater in use for amateur radio. Stopped communicating with programming Ethernet ports. Found melted resistor on board near CM4 power connector on corner. Parts list and PCB diagrams are here. And he has a link. I know you will have no way to test the board, and I accept liability for that. I love your videos and watch regularly, so I couldn't imagine sending it anywhere else. Thank you very much. Thank you for the trust and for watching the channel. And the name of the customer is Mike. Thank you very much, Mike. Now, if we click on the link that the customer provided, we have this. Let's see what kind of manual Kenwood provides. I mean, that's a 156 page manual. <laughs> Do they really provide circuit diagrams, board diagrams? I mean, I see part numbers here. R198, you have a part number. R202, you have a part number. R203, you have a part number. Wow. Look at that part number list. It goes on and on and on and on and on. Wow. And what's up here? Every part, every knob, every screw is posted here. Kenwood did not have to provide this information. Apple never provides that information. Asus never provides that information. Nobody provides that information. Look at Kenwood. We have part numbers, do we have schematics? Oh, wait. We are starting to get into the layers, the layout of the board. But still, I do not see any parts on that board. So this is for what? Component side view, final unit, J790149-09. I have a board number here, J790011. So this is probably, so it looks like they have more than one board layout on this PDF file because the board number I have is J790011-19. Zero seven nine zero one four nine. I mean, I do not want to waste a lot of time going over the pages, but I just want to see something useful. We have components layout right here. We have components layout right here. Are you kidding me? Really? Wow. Kenwood is really something. I mean, who provides this information? Honestly, who provides this information? Rosman has been fighting for the right to repair for the past how long? Five years, six years, ten years? I don't know. And he's fighting to get this. Schematics and board diagrams. We have it here. We have parts lists. We have the board layout. I did not see schematics yet, but I'm sure I will. I mean, that's 156 page manual. Where should we look? Oh, oh, right there, right there, right there. So we do have schematics. How do we browse through 165 page manual? Is that practical? We have to narrow things down. 
what I need to do is the customer mentioned burnt components or melted components. If we look under the microscope, I see this. He did mention CM4. So at least in that manual, we can search for CM4. I do not see any components numbers here. I cannot reference this guy by C928, for example. It doesn't have a number. Those inductors, they do not have a number. So the only number I have on the board right now in this area is CM4. Maybe we can look at CM4 and see what CM4 connects to. I do not know what's going on here. It looks like somebody attempted to repair the board and they have this huge solder blob. I do not know what's going under. How should components be? Vertical, horizontal? Do we have one component? Do we have more than one component? Do we have a three-legged component? Do we have a two-legged component? I don't know. Without a circuit diagram, schematics alone is not enough. We need to have some type of a board view diagram in order to know what we have here. So let's go ahead and search for CM4 using that manual and see what happens. Let's search for CN4. What information are we going to get for CM4? Well, the first piece of information is the part number of the connector. It's a fuse holder. Fuse holder, CM4 is not a fuse holder, it's a connector. Okay, let's continue the search because I told you in the manual it looks like they are referencing more than one board. So CM4 on one board can be different than CM4 on another board. You see, we have another CM4 here. Pin assembly. We have, we're not interested in 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. I'm just interested in finding out what's going on in this area. This is not going to help me. Okay, so this is J790151-09. That's not the board that I have. I think the customer wrote NXR800K. I do not know if that makes a difference. Oh, right there, right there. I think, I think we have the connector right here. It's a four-legged connector, but I do not see any components in front of the connector. They are just showing you the layers of the board here. Let me keep searching. CM4, that's not what I'm looking for. CM46, not the one. Right there, right there. J790011-19, they have dash 09 here. I do not know if that makes a difference, but that's what I see. It looks like the same board layout. We're going to check up closely. So we have a connector, CM4, and we have exactly the same layout. We have L4, inductor, capacitor, capacitor, and it looks like the damaged components that we have are resistors. R405 and R4, and then we have three inductors. Let's take a look at the board and see if that matches. You see? Look at this. We have the connector, and then we have an inductor on top. We have two capacitors, and we have two resistors horizontally. One and two, and then we have three inductors. That's it. So we got it. But we got what? We got the resistor number. Let's search for R405. I do not want to search for R4 because we're going to get a lot of R4s. R41, R42, R47, R405, so on and so forth. So maybe we can narrow it down by searching for R405 and see what information we have because I need to know the resistor value. We have R405 here, but R405 is lonely. Where is R4? I do not see it. So we're going to assume that's not the one. 
and there should be a board number on this page. You know what, let's keep going. Right there, right there, we got it. R405 and R4, and they are connecting in parallel. Zero ohm resistor and a zero ohm resistor. Why do we have two zero ohm resistors connecting in parallel? Can somebody leave it down in the comments? The value of the resistors, zero ohm resistor and a zero ohm resistor. How would we have ever found out the value of those resistors or what those components were if it wasn't for this manual? How? Even if you grab a similar picture online, you're not going to know the values of the resistors unless you have an exact similar board that you can use as a donor and then you can measure the values of the resistors. But there's absolutely no way to know what those components are and what the values are if it wasn't for this manual that Ken would provide it. Wow, I'm amazed. I'm honestly amazed at Kenwood for providing that manual. I do not know if all their products are like this, but this particular one, they provided everything that you need. Schematics, board diagrams, part numbers. Wow. Even the enclosure assembly, the screws, the knobs, everything. Kenwood deserves to be praised for that manual, honestly. I mean, if every company provided a manual like this with so much details, a lot more devices would get fixed. We need everyone to do the same. Why can Kenwood do it? And Apple, for example, cannot. They provided a 156-page manual. They're not afraid that you're going to go and look at their 156-page manual and create a similar product. It doesn't work like this. Okay, so in here, I see something else. I see a placeholder for two components. I need to look up that board view diagram again. So here we see two components and not three components. But the way I see it, they're all connecting in parallel. Look at this. This looks like a fuse. And they're all connecting on the same line on top and on the same line on the bottom. So we know that we have zero ohm resistors. This is a fuse and those are resistors. Even though they're all zero ohms, the fuse's job is different than a resistor. Now the component looks like possibly size 805. This is the 805 resistor booklet. We have 10 booklets in stock. If you are in the same type of business or you are doing this as a hobby, you can buy all 10 books from us. We have resistors size 201, 402, 603, 805, and 1206. And same thing for capacitors, 201, 402, 603, 805, and 1206. So let me check 805, is it the same? Maybe we can use the soldering iron just like that see you have to use that piece of meat in your head now I think I don't know I think 805 is big maybe we should try 603 I feel like 805 is too big I mean, I can look in that manual and try to figure it out. But right now, the only step down from 805 is 603. So let's see, I have 603 here.
and we lost it. We lost it to the ninth dimension. No coming back. And that's the one. That's the one. Let me grab the NF dot mini soldering pen. I have much more control with this pen. See? A lot more control. The magic of the NF dot mini pen. Now, just one piece of information that we have missing from the manual is the watt rating of the resistor. I did not find it anywhere. Maybe it doesn't matter. I was searching for R405, but that's a 15K resistor. It should not be 15K, it should be zero ohms. And I did not find any other part for R405. We know it's a zero ohm value. Like I said, it's not gonna matter. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. It's a 603 size component. And for the most part, values are going to be close. You see no indications of watt ratings anywhere. The component is a 603 resistor, zero ohm resistor. And for the most part, it's not going to be a problem. We are done. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Let me know what you think about Kenwood in general. Do they always provide such detailed manuals with all their devices? I mean, I was amazed at what I saw, and I hope and wish that every company would do the same. Kenwood provided a lot of details in that manual, and they did not have to, but they did. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.